G'day YouTube. Welcome back to the VK8 FOES YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about the somewhat obscure hobby of digital satellite television receiving. Viewers of my channel probably already know that I'm a massive fan of receiving satellite signals. Until recently, I was receiving mostly L-band satellite signals such as Inmarsat, Iridium, Thuraya, and GPS. And then I purchased one of these things. This is a TBS 5927 USB satellite TV tuner from Shenzhen TurboSight Technologies. When this is used in conjunction with a satellite dish and LNB, you can watch satellite TV channels on your PC or laptop. It's a very nice device. DVBS or Digital Video Broadcasting for Satellite is the technical standard which defines and governs the transmission method for sending television over a satellite. One might think that DVBS can only transmit digital TV, but this isn't the case. In fact, all kinds of data can be piggybacked onto these television signals. Examples of this are or examples of this data can be firmware updates for a satellite TV set top box, internet service provider IP downlinks, voice over IP telephone calls, remote monitoring and control system traffic, emails to ocean going vessels on the water and much more. I've got a handful of DVBS uh, satellite videos in this playlist here. It's these four videos here. So go and check them out in your own time if you want to learn more about that. So another cool sub hobby of satellite TV is feed hunting. Feed hunting, simply put, is the act of searching for satellite signals that aren't intended to be viewed by the general public. Examples of this could be raw, live camera feeds from a satellite news van, such as this, press conferences from politicians, live entertainment events, such as a music festival or concert, and as you can see in this video, a sports broadcast, a live sports broadcast. Satellites are very efficient at transmitting high definition television signals, and because they orbit the Earth at such a high altitude, they can provide coverage to a large portion of the surface of the planet. This makes them perfect candidates for TV stations to backhaul content that isn't intended for viewing by the general public. And as we can see in this video here, it's just a bunch of live production engineers getting set up for a rugby match in Australia this evening. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I received that a few days ago. So back in the early days of feed hunting, actually finding satellite TV transponders carrying IP data or TV wild feeds such as this was very difficult. As consumer grade TV receivers, well, we call them set top boxes in Australia. They're just those boxes that sit on top of your television and they interface directly to your satellite dish and receive the signals from the satellite. But these boxes could only tune into satellite TV channels that were pre-programmed into the set-top boxes memory. So essentially what that means is the TV set-top box could only receive a satellite it knows about. And this is problematic because TV wild feeds such as this often appear suddenly without notice and on a random frequency, which is dependent on what the client wants. The client could be a TV studio or anything like that. This is a really cool video that I recommend people go and watch. Um, you'll see, if you do watch it, you'll see that this guy wrote some software that interfaced with to his consumer satellite receiver that controls his motorized satellite dish and essentially scans the sky for any satellite signals. This was an early solution to the problem of finding these elusive IP data and TV wild feeds. Fast forward to today and we have nice things like blind scan. Blind scanning is the ability for a satellite TV receiver to search the entire frequency band for 
satellite TV transponders it doesn't know about. Most modern enthusiast grade set top boxes and PC receivers such as this have blind scan functionality built in as standard. But not all though, you have to get the higher end devices if you want blind scan. So remember how I mentioned that satellite wild feeds seemingly appear out of nowhere on a random frequency? With a blind scan enabled receiver, you can scan a particular satellite throughout the day or night and find these elusive broadcasts that aren't intended for your eyes. So it's a very, very nice feature for satellite hobby receiving enthusiasts. Okay, so today we're going to do an unboxing and a review of a new satellite receiver I acquired recently. This is the TBS 6903, which is no longer manufactured and sold by TurboSight anymore. And along with its bigger and beefier brother, the 6908, these things are considered to be, by most hobbyists, the best satellite uh, receivers that TurboSight ever produced. So these are essentially cream of the crop, these devices. Now there is a newer version of this called the 6903X and that is a DVB S2X variant. So it's a more modern version of this which supports S2X, which is a DVB standard. But, and the X variant outclasses this in every metric, but due to the very poor driver support in Windows and Linux, the older 6903 is considered to be better for true satellite TV enthusiasts. So yeah, with all that being said, let's proceed to the unboxing, shall we? Firstly, we'll turn our attention to the packaging briefly. The 6903 is shipped in this brown flip lid cardboard box with the red accent, which is very typical for TBS products. The box is very slim, indicating that this is definitely a PCIe card. The USB DVBS tuners from TurboSide are shipped in a much thicker box because they've got an AC adapter and a couple of other things packaged inside. We also have two white stickers placed on the top and the right hand side respectively and they display various pieces of information uh, about the product contained inside. On the rear of the box we have the various compliance, recycling and disposal symbols here and over here we have the company name and contact details over here. Who could forget mentioning that we have the TurboSight slogan of the best solutions for digital TV and more written on the top of the box, of the lid, sorry, and on each side. And finally, we have the TBS TurboSight Shenzhen logo printed on the left front of the lid. Very simplistic and functional packaging. So taking a look inside the box now, we have the 6903 card packaged safely inside a static electricity proof bag. If we flip it, flip the actual card over, we can see that there is a silica gel moisture absorbing bag inside. The static bag, or the static proof bag is also sealed with a yellow sticker warning its new owner to handle it with care. If I remove the card from the box, we can see that there is a cardboard insert placed at the bottom, which contains a SATA power cable and a low profile bracket. The, this bracket has two holes for the 6903's dual F-type RF ports, and they are labeled LNB0 and LNB1 respectively. Before we remove the 6903 from its anti-static bag, I'll just quickly throw on my rubber gloves. I'll be with you very shortly.
Okay, I've got my rubber gloves on now to ensure that I don't deliver some unwanted static electricity to this lovely DVB card. So I purchased this second hand and the anti-static bag has actually been opened previously, but this was sold as brand new condition. So I'll just have to use these pairs of scissors to cut the sticky tape that the previous owner had put on there to seal the bag. Sorry, this is really hard to do with rubber gloves on. And I'll turn it around. Okay, firstly, it is apparent to us that it is a PCIe Express 1X card. A regular length PCIe bracket is attached by default. And we can see that the 6903's dual F-type RF ports are protruding out of the bracket. So looking at the red PCB now, we can see the model number of the device printed in white text over here. And over at the bottom right of the board, we have the hardware revision also written in white text. So this 6903 appears to be a version 2.0 revision. So focusing on the components now, the large Lattice FPGA chip is here. And then in the center of the board, we have the STV0910 demodulator chip. That's here. And then right over the left-hand side near the RF ports is the STV6120 tuner chip. chip sorry. From my observations, the biggest change from the version 1.2 board seems to be the lack of an RF shield over this portion of the board. There are various other surface mount components and ICs littered across this board, but I'll just mention that this white two pin connector at the rear of the card is where the SATA power adapter plugs into, and that will supply the 6903 with power to power the LMB on the satellite dish and steer the dish and do other things such as that. So flipping over now, on the underside of the card, we have a white sticker, which just tells me the MAC addresses of each of the white tuners. Oh, sorry, a uh, white sticker showing me the MAC address of each of the dual tuners on this card. So now that we've had a look at the hardware, let's install it into a PC and try it out with EBS Pro. See you guys shortly.